we began a relationship that lasted about three years. I was underage and he became my legal guardian. We were in a hotel and he threw my birth control pills off the balcony and um, within about a year I became pregnant. He wanted me to have that abortion before I left the hospital. I just kept saying no. Steven Tyler described his victim as a, quote, little 16-year-old who knew how to do the nasty and there wasn't any hair on it, end quote. This rock star decided to take advantage of a young fan and ultimately become her guardian so he could do whatever he wanted to with her without facing criminal charges. But his victim isn't backing down, so let's get into it. We need to talk about this situation involving Steven Tyler because it's incredibly disappointing. If you guys don't know who Steven Tyler is, he was the singer for a band called Aerosmith. He also was on the show American Idol, which I remember seeing him on and judging all of the contestants, and he seemed like a decent guy. But unfortunately, we've known about these allegations for over a decade, and I'm shocked by what he's been accused of doing and what he's admitted to. You know, I met Stephen when I was just 16 years old, and he became my legal guardian. I was his ward. This is something I've not seen in Hollywood before, where the person who's abusing the other person ends up becoming their legal guardian, so they actually have control over that person's well-being. And that's exactly what Steven Tyler did to a woman named Julia Holcomb. She was 16 years old when Tyler convinced her mother to grant guardianship to him, so he would be responsible for her school and her doctor appointments and making sure she's all right. Of course, that's not what happened. He took this 16-year-old and he groomed her. He did an appropriate things to her and at some point he even got her pregnant. But before we get there, I want to talk about why this lawsuit is coming up now. Some people are definitely criticizing Julia because she could have filed this, you know, a decade ago, but in reality there was a law in California that's been temporarily waived and now the statute of limitations which would stop Julia previously from suing Tyler are now gone and she can actually go and sue him. I think that's great that we can finally hold these people accountable and it's thanks to the California's Child Victims Act. It actually became law in 2019 and it had a three year limit and it looks like Julia decided to file right before the limit ended. So she could have actually filed this lawsuit back in 2019, but she's doing it now. Steven Tyler isn't actually mentioned in this lawsuit. He's listed as Doe number one and there's a bunch of other people involved as well, about 50 people, which would make sense because Steven Tyler had a lot of people working for him and he literally became the legal guardian of of the 16 year old when he was in his 20s, so he had to have help. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, he has admitted to some of this. The lawsuit pulls quotes directly from Steven Tyler's own book. He wrote that he almost took a teen bride and that her parents fell in love with him, signed a paper over for him to have custody so he wouldn't get arrested if he took her out state. So he kept her on tour with him the entire time and would do whatever he wanted to with her because now I guess she's his. He's the guardian. He's supposed to be taking care of her like a parent, but he wasn't treating her like a daughter at all, more like a teenage girlfriend that he knew was illegal. That's why he got the guardianship started in the first place. Julia claims she's coming forward now because she knows she's not the only one who suffered abuse in the music industry. And she feels like it's time for her to take a stand and bring this to action. She wants to speak up and stand with other survivors. Julia claims when she was 18, she was powerless to resist Steven's power, fame, and substantial financial ability. And that Steven coerced and persuaded her into to believing that this was a romantic love affair when reality it was far from that it was a sick situation and she's a victim here i mean a 16 year old doesn't understand what's happening when there's 50 people working together to 
create this relationship, this fantasy relationship that Steven wanted. He was 25 when they first met and she was actually 16. It was her 16th birthday when she went to an Aerosmith concert in Portland, Oregon. They ended up meeting that night, which is crazy. Your 16th birthday and you meet like the lead singer, that sounds unreal. And he invited her to his hotel room and they got talking and he learned how old she was. And then after that, he decided to engage with her. I met Steven when I was 16 years old at a concert. Um, I had just be recently met a girl who invited me to go to parties um, there and I met him and um, we began a relationship that lasted about three years. I was underage and he became my legal guardian. I lived with him in Boston and I traveled with him on tour and at first I didn't think that it would be a long-term relationship. I just knew that I cared a great deal for him. There's no doubt in my mind that Julia is a true victim and survivor in this situation because she's not a 16 year old like you know creating this entire plan to get with this rock star and then like you know, gain financially from him. She's literally a hopeless teen who's looking for love. I mean, her family life was rough. Her father abandoned her mother early on, and her younger brother died in a car accident when she was 13, which is three years before she met Stephen. So she probably saw him as some miracle, some savior, because her mom was struggling, and she was, of course, struggling as well. So he came into the picture, and she was incredibly vulnerable. So they're in his hotel room. They're talking talking about her age and he asks her why was she out all night by herself they ended up talking about her troubles at home which we just discussed and then he performed various acts of criminal you know what upon her she actually didn't end up staying in his hotel room that night which i am surprised about but he probably knew better because she's literally 16 like are her parents going to be looking for her after the concert so he called a taxi and she was on her way shortly after he bought her a plane ticket to his next show in seattle keep in mind that she's 16 at this point so it's actually illegal for him to transport this minor across state lines she ended up going to his hotel room that night he did things with her and she was on her way on the plane the following day back to Portland. By the following year, Steven Tyler had gotten closer and closer with Julia and her mother and convinced her mother to sign off guardianship so that she could travel with him on tour. This is really important because he understands what he was doing was criminal, so that's why he manipulated the system. And I think in court, they're going to look at that and realize there's some red flags here because this guy is totally aware. It'd be a lot better for Steven if he said, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know this was illegal, but he did and he maneuvered around the situation to protect himself. He told her mother that he would provide her better support, um, better health care, better school, but he did not follow through on these promises and he didn't provide anything to her besides drugs and a bunch of trauma by getting physical with her as a teen. So she was living a rock star life at 16 on tour with him. Not only did he avoid getting Julia medical care because if he got her medical care, they would realize that there's something weird here. He also took her birth control and got rid of it and kind of like almost forced her to get pregnant by removing the birth control and then doing whatever he wanted to with her. So they weren't even together that long until she became pregnant. We're in a hotel and he threw my birth control pills off the balcony. And um, within about a year, I became pregnant. So she's 17 years old and Steven insists that she terminates the pregnancy. At first she did not want to, but she was left at home at an apartment for a couple of weeks and she was going through it and at some point there was an apartment fire. This ended up leaving her in the hospital and while she was in the hospital, he pressured her to get rid of that baby because he knew that that baby was gonna get him in trouble. And at this point, she was like five months pregnant, I believe, so she was pretty far along. I had no education, I dropped out of high school, I didn't have a driver's license, I couldn't go anywhere, I had no money of my own, and I had had no prenatal care, so I was in a, in a difficult position. He would call in the evening to check on me, but um, after about two weeks, the food in the apartment was running low, and I remember telling him, I need to go grocery shopping. And he said, well, I'll send someone over tomorrow. He was going to send Ray over 
who was a former band member and had helped with the band when they traveled. He said, I'll send Ray over. He'll take you grocery shopping tomorrow. So I was so excited because I had been cooped up in that apartment for two weeks and I was going to get to get out of the house. I, I sat there by the window just waiting for Ray to come. And he arrived. I let him in. And I don't remember what happened after that, but I woke up in a fire. Ray was gone, and the apartment was on fire. There was smoke everywhere. I could not see anything but smoke. One of Stephen's arguments for why she should get rid of the baby was because the baby would have suffered from lack of oxygen due to the apartment fire, which the apartment fire still sounds really like sketchy to me. I don't quite understand exactly like how this went down and then she was like unconscious and woke up in the hospital. It all sounds really, I don't know. Fishy. But this procedure was traumatic for her. She actually is a pro-life activist now, but after she had the procedure at 17, she left Stephen and she went to Portland to change her life. She became a devout Catholic. She met her husband and she said she buried her past experiences with Stephen Tyler until he wrote about them in a book and mischaracterized it. This book was really a bad idea for Stephen Tyler. Like he really thinks that he's untouchable, that he could write about this and he wouldn't get in trouble for it. It's like he's pretty much admitting to half of what she's alleging. She says that she was completely content in her life until this book came out and he referred to his time with an underage girl as some like romantic loving relationship, but it was far from this. He of course did not ask for her consent to write about her. And he talks about this underage girl in this memoir and in an Aerosmith autobiography. And he also mentions the apartment fire, um, the termination of the pregnancy. And what's even creepier is that he refers to Julia as Diana in this book and claims that she was 14 when they met, but they actually met when she was 16. So why is he trying to make her seem like even younger in this fantasy, like memoir book that he's writing about? And even though he does refer to the procedure that Julia was pretty much forced to have. He doesn't explicitly say how it happened and how the fire was linked to this. And it really wasn't, um, I guess, great timing because she was so far along. Where the doctors wouldn't do it because I was so far along. He wanted me to have that abortion before I left the hospital. I just kept saying no until he placed the decision between him and the baby that I was going to have to go home uh, if, if I decided to keep my baby. I just couldn't imagine my life without him. If what Julia is claiming is true, then Steven Tyler is literally a monster because some of the ways that he has spoken about her is so foul. Quote, she was 16. She knew how to nasty and there wasn't hair on it, end quote. He wrote in his memoir before saying he became the girl's guardian to avoid getting arrested if he took her out of state before detailing their intimate encounters. Quote, with my bad self being 26 and she barely old enough to drive and sexy as hell, I just fell madly in love with her. She was a cute little skinny tomboy dressed up as little Bo Peep. She was my heart's desire, my partner in crimes of passion. And he's speaking about a child and acknowledging that he's like 26 and she's 10 years younger. Also, the way that he's objectifying her in those quotes speak to what he was intending on doing. She was just a little side piece he planned on throwing away the entire time. Julia has been quoted saying, I want this action to expose an industry that protects celebrity offenders to cleanse and hold accountable an industry that both exploited and allowed me to be exploited for years, along with so many other naive and vulnerable kids and adults. If you guys want me to keep you up to date on this lawsuit and what happens, comment below. If you have any other video ideas for me, here's my email and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.